We're now recording. So um, like I said, our first present presenters are from Georgia Gwinnett College. Um, the, they've created a, an interactive uh, programming fundamentals textbook, and we are excited to hear from you guys. So take it away. Thanks, Tiffany. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. My name is Bob Lutz. I am a faculty member and the chair of studies at Georgia Gwinnett College for our information technology program. We call this our iTech program. I'll provide a brief introduction to our project and to the team and then hand off to my colleague. We'll describe the challenges that we faced and the promising results that we have attained. And then Dr. Wei Jin will take it from there for the remainder of the talk. First, a few facts and observations that set the context for our Affordable Learning Georgia or ALG project. So if you don't know us, Georgia Gwinnett College, we're a young open access and diverse college in the university system of Georgia. College enrollment is approximately 12,000 and our iTech program comprises about 11% of that overall campus enrollment. Um, our students, faculty, and administration all share a strong desire to have low or low cost course materials in our in our courses. So prior to starting the project, as we applied for our ALG grant, we recognized several things. We recognized that established texts are, are expensive and in many ways they're roughly equivalent and roughly equivalent to open source materials that are out there. We recognize that our students prefer and excel with interactive content. We, we recognize that many high quality open source materials exist for introductory programming that we could leverage. We also know that our programming fundamentals course is a gateway course with high DFWI rates. So we want to focus on ways to make significant improvements there. And looking forward, we also realize that there's a follow on opportunity for our CS2 course, right? The next course in our programming sequence. So our grant application was successful and now we'll provide some background and report on the efforts that followed. Next slide, please. So here's a impression of the ALG site, the open ALG site showing our text materials. You can see that our authors are listed near the top of the page and also over on the virtual cover to the right. If um, you know any of our seven authors, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll help where we can. If you have a general inquiry, we're going to um, suggest that you get in touch with Dr. Haisung Park, our principal investigator. Um, you can also get access to these materials through Galileo through that service and we'll come back to the contact info at the end and reemphasize that with Dr. Park's contact information. So next I'll introduce our team and I'm going to start about two o'clock on this uh, diagram, I guess. Uh, Dr. Sonal Deckney is our interim dean at the School of Science and Technology and professor in our iTech program. Next, Dr. Taksu M is an Associate Professor of Information Technology at GGC. Next, Dr. Nail Abahalawel is the CIS Head at al Qads Open University and a former colleague of ours at GGC. Next, Dr. Hai Sung is our Principal Investigator and Assistant Professor of Information Technology at GGC. Next is Dr. Richard Price, Assistant Professor at GGC followed by Dr. Wei Jin, our presenter today and associate professor of information technology at GGC. And then lastly, myself, and we've already, I've already given you that, that background at the beginning. So our team, seven folks, we all came together, contributed with individual chapters um, following the uniform editorial guidelines from our principal investigator to get to um, a impressive and um, result that has um, got some prom very promising results. So with that, I'm going to transition to Dr. Wei Jin, who will talk more about our project. 
Uh, hey everyone, um, uh, it's really an honor for me to represent uh, our team to present uh, uh, the project here. As, as you can see, we have a seven-member team, uh, a relatively large team, compared with most, with most other ALG projects. We'd like to share with you how we made it work through the excellent coordination effort of Dr. Park and everyone's team spirit. So, I'll first talk about um, the procedures and timeline. So, in early fall 2018, uh, at our course coordination meeting for ITAP 2140, the Computer Science One course at GTC, uh, we talk about the possibility about uh, you know to apply for ALG grant. As mentioned earlier uh, by Dr. Lutz, uh, we all believe that a free uh, interactive online textbook will be a great help for our students. And Dr. Park volunteered for the coordination efforts, and we divide the task among us. So with one professor, a uh, one person responsible for one section of the grant or with the proposal. And in addition, we received lots of assistance from our grant office. Dr. Park worked uh, closely with them uh, to get their feedback, then organized meetings among us to address the uh, race issues. So I just want to use this opportunity to thank uh, our grant office for all the support they have provided us. Then in early spring 2019, Shortly after the proposal was accepted, we attended the kickoff event at Middle Georgia State University to learn about the expectations of the project and also the, learn about the resources available. For, re for the rest of the spring, our focus is get all the preparations done so, so that we can focus on writing the textbook in the summer. So first, we collect all the open uh, textbooks out there for C computer science one. Uh, computer science one. Uh, after comparing them, we chose do, uh, Think Java as a reference, as a main reference for our for, for our own efforts. So the topics in Think Java ma matched relatively well with, with our existing curriculum. We also decided to uh, embed a code visualizer uh, in the textbook as an interactive component in the textbook. So we made our research plan and designed the surveys. We also divide the task, uh, task among us with one person responsible for one chapter. So it's a happy uh, coincidence. We have a seven member team and then actually there are exactly seven chapters in the textbook. So uh, summer 2019 was really the period we had to get everything done. Since a new textbook will be in use in the fall, so the schedule was quite intense. We, uh, we went through three different versions, uh, draft one version, and draft two, and prototype version ready for use. So the draft one was due in early June, right after the due date <coughs> was the chapter review. So one person would pick up two other chapters to review and provide the feedback uh, to the colleagues. Uh, afterwards, we held a meeting to make some necessary decisions, such as the common format for all chapters, and all and the all chapters should include uh, Java visualizer examples, uh, so the students can interact with with the visualizer and observe how programs are executed. And all assignments should be auto gradable whenever possible. We adopted Mimer, uh, Mimer, an uh, online system that can grade coding assignments automatically. Draft 2 was due in early July, uh, after the due date was the uh, uh, second round of review, which is the whole book, book review. So everyone, uh, you know, review the whole book. So here we like especially thank uh, Dr. Richard Price for dedicating his July 4th weekend uh, to uh, thoroughly review and test the whole textbook to lead the second round of review effort. After the uh, update uh, was done, we think we had we had the prototype version ready for use. However, it doesn't mean the textbook was final. Actually, it was alive. We we maintained our uh, content using GitHub, and then we can actually update and improve the quality of the textbook throughout the, the duration of the project. So, last in early August, the PowerPoints and exercise were due. So in fall 2019 and spring 2020, uh, we collected the student perceptions about 
textbooks, uh, about the new textbooks through surveys. We also use um, Google Analytics to track the textbook usage data. And in addition, uh, Dr. Uh, Richard Price and others who taught the course during this period also kept updating the book and make sure the quality kept on improving. In spring 2020, uh, we, uh, our fall 2019 data were analyzed and our work, the impact of affordable learning open textbook on computing education was presented at the ACM Southeast Conference in April. So in summer, uh, we submitted our final report to ALG. Our textbook was published online at the ALG repository. And uh, our work, uh, you know, uh, the paper that summarized both the fall and the spring data were presented at IEEE Integrated STEM Education Conference in August. So that's uh, uh, the procedure on that timeline. What we so now we're going to share the content of our textbook. So here are the seven chapters of the textbook. Uh, very uh, similar, the order is very similar to the uh, in order in the, uh, the textbook that we are replacing. So in addition to the descriptive, descriptive text, we also contain a lot of other resources in our textbook, including links to other open educational resources Videos, videos to support student learning, and also embedded code in Java Visualizer. So the students could control interactions with the visualizer through buttons and work through the code step by step and observe how the programs, how a code get executed. So observe what happens, like what is in memory, what happens in memory, and what is printed by the, uh, by the program. For instructor resources, we include a sample code uh, exercise solutions, uh, PowerPoints, quizzes, and auto-gradable coding assignment. As indicated here, our textbook includes links to other educational resources. Here I'd like to go over uh, the resources referenced in the textbook quickly. So we had a reference for the um, open textbook Think Java. And also have references in the Oracle website about the various topics and YouTube, YouTube videos and also Safari Online. So Safari Online was, uh, a GDC, uh, was subscribed by GGC for all faculty and students. We also have links to LinkedIn Learning, Pong Academy, and Stanford CS101, W3 Resources, and Code Academy. So now let's take a look what uh, students and data say about the new textbook. So we conduct a service uh, from um, summer 2019 uh, to spring 20, 2020. Uh, the survey questions uh, were using the Likert scale. A reliability test was conducted with a post, survey, a post survey, and the Cronbach's alpha was 0.8. Uh, six two. So it shows that all items of the survey were acceptable with internal consistency reliability. And as we're going to show in the next couple slides, students indicate a positive experience using the online textbook. So here are the five questions regarding the textbook, regarding the student's experience with the textbook. So we collect 182 responses for the first five questions, our uh, first four questions. And 181 responses for the last question. So among all the responses, 909 responses, 73% are positive, 15% uh, uh, neutral, and the rest are negative. So we can see it's overwhelmingly pos positive. And here are some quotes from students. Students say it's very easy to access and I could access it anywhere, plus very organized and I could find what I needed in a couple of seconds. I like that it was written by our professors with their knowledge and experience and that there was no cost to the book. Awesome, because it's not just a textbook, it's a textbook that tells you exactly where to start. We also uh, collected a faculty survey in spring 2020. So here are some quotes. Uh, so the online textbook is, the initiative is great, saves money for our students, allows open access anywhere for both instructors and students. And it's a great way to save students money. 
and having an easier time accessing it than proprietary textbook. So, and also mentioned some other comments mentioned. It's still work in progress. Uh, we, actually, we are still um, uh, keep on updating it, and has a lot, lots of potential to become valuable resources for our students. Okay, so, we also look at some data. Um, uh, we collect, uh, so we 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 noticed uh, improvement in spring uh, 2020. We have. 63% uh, of students pass the course with the grade ABC. So compared with the previous three semesters, the average is around 49 to 51%. So that, that is, we reduce the DFW rate for around, from around 50% to 37% in the spring. And here we compare the uh, class grades. So we can see in spring 2019, the GP average for the class is 2.85, and for fall 2019, we observed 1.05% uh, improvement over spring, and then in the spring next year, we observed 4.21% uh, improvement over one year ago after using the textbook. So it's it's quite a significant. And then we also observe. So in addition. Um, we also save students lots of money. So we ask, we saved students uh, a total of roughly seventy-five thousand dollars. As mentioned earlier, we also used Google Analytics to track the usage data, usage data of the textbook. Uh, so the, you know we can see the uh, from the previous slides we can see we have a total of five hundred thirty-eight students from both the fall and spring. So we can see the you know the the tracking is less than ideal, right? Uh, we are still looking for ways to better, uh, better you know, keep track of the usage data. So now I'll conclude. Um, so instructors report a positive experience with students, since there's no need to worry about students not having a textbook, and also report of flexibility due to the ability to choose material selectively from a repository of resources resources contributed by authors. We also report, uh, report common assessment and course materials, reduce the repetitive work. For students, they report saving money and due to the you know, greater access, so they have greater engagement, so we have lower withdrawal rates. Also, uh, some data suggest uh, uh, that the text will maybe used like a reference. So online textbook make it very easy for students to look up materials. Uh, in addition to the descriptive text, they can also we also include lots of reference links in the book to help students help students look for information they need. So for our future work, we'll continue to improve and update the textbook. We're going to gather keep on up gathering good teaching practices and resources for current and the future instructors. So we also want to determine what is the best way to use the textbook for students. In order to do that, we have to study really how students are using the online textbook. Do they really read from cover to cover, or they just use it mainly for looking up something, or both? So we really need to figure out a better way to track the textbook usage data. And also, as the textbook published, we're starting to use the, report, the, the book published in the repository, whether we can still keep track of the usage there. So here is our presentation. I think uh, now it's a question and answer time. Thank you. Thank you. Do, do we have any questions? I'm not seeing any in the chat at the moment. Yeah. Um, one of my, a question that I have is how are the part time faculty using the materials? Uh, for the first time faculty, uh, we certainly point them into the textbook. We also have all the resources we developed. We have actually a course template. So, um, so we, we share the course template with them. So, the, you know, so uh, we have the course template in both D2L and also the course template in the memoir. 
So they can inherit all the materials we developed. Anyone has anything to add? I have another question. What were some of the challenges when you were doing uh, this project? Um, I think the challenge at the beginning when we see is just how to organize all the effort. And I think Dr. Park did a great job organizing everything. Um, so, um, anyone, have, other team members have things to add to this? I, I can add something. This is Sonal Dekne. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of resources available online and um, to the point that it's it, it was a significant effort to find the right resources to curate the resources. I think that was definitely um, a time consuming task, N not not necessarily a challenge, but just finding the right resources was important and it was a time consuming task. Uh, do you all um, want to show? Oh, I'm sorry. Did, you were going to add something, hi Sam. Um, yeah, sure. Another challenge was because we had to concent uh, concentrate, um, concentrate, and creating the each chapter in a short amount of time. So we did not have enough time, but we had to squeeze our time. For example, let's say July 4th time. Dr. Price had to, even though um, it is a holiday for everyone, but um, he keep uh, providing the revision and they keep providing information where to revise. So actually many of the faculty member actually sacrifice um, their own time um, to complete this textbook. So I think that time was kind of a challenge, if I can add. If, if I can add one more thing uh, as well, I think the size of our group for a project like this was was pretty big and it took a little bit of time for us to come together but and to you know kind of center on and adopt the same editorial standards for the pieces that we were putting together so i think it was um we we rose to that challenge in two ways one with really strong leadership provided by dr park and the second which has already been um, addressed which is just a lot of people um being unselfish, sometimes even off contract or in the summer and coming in and putting in a lot of hard work to just kind of muscle through that. So that's kind of my perspective of, of what I observed and participated in. That's um, that is this is really valuable information um, for people looking at doing future grant projects. Um, some things to think about, the challenges, um, and what worked really well for you guys. Do you want to show um, what the textbook looks like? Show some of the interactive features? So let me go to the next slide. So, uh, so here is a published textbook. I'm just going there. So here is a public textbook, if you can see, looks really nice. Um, yeah. And I would like to, let's see. And here, let's go to the other one. Uh, oops. Is the the version we are kind of still updating that. So the, the, the content is hosted on GitHub. And then uh, the content will be automatically put to this site periodically. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, kind of work, still working program. We're still updating the textbook. So if you can see uh, in chapter, so like, let's say in chapter two, we, this is a format we always start with learning outcome, key terms, resources, overview, and then we have start the chapter. Um, uh, 
think we can see what you're seeing. Oh. Yeah, we are looking at the PowerPoint. You may have to unshare and reshare. Oh, this is fine. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I missed a couple, a couple things. So here is the, our textbook. Uh, so uh, this is the published textbook on ALG repository. This is here. And that's the first link in the slide. And the second one is actually the live textbook. That, uh, so that is uh, still, we are still updating it. Uh, we host our uh, textbook content through GitHub. Uh, and then the content will be put uh, periodically and uh, assembled together into this website. Okay, so if you make update half an hour later, you will see your changes here on this website. Uh, so each chapter has a common format. We always have learning outcome, key terms, resources, and overview. And then you have you start the content. So just want to demo the. Um, uh, the interactive component of our course. So here is a Java visualizer. We already formatted and include our code in there. So through the visualizer, students can actually observe what's happening, what how this code is executed. It's a very simple code. It's a chapter two, so you can see students can interact with buttons. And so this is a variable declaration with assigning a variable uh, value 28 to the variable. And then yeah, so student can work through the code and observe what's happened in the memory. So that's an early example. Okay. So there's no output because we have uh, there's no output statement here. So if you scroll down to other chapters, I want to find uh, like loops and array. So here is chapter six, array and loops. So here is the Java tutor example as well. So here a student can see how the array is created, how the array looks like in memory. So this array, when you create it, everything's zero. And then each element will be assigned a value through, yeah. And then, yeah. And then the, if you write a loop, the loop can also go through the example. So soon you can observe how the loop is executed. Oops, sorry, that's a little bit. Okay, here. So here is one with, uh, with is a loop here. So you can see here for change. So this value times three will be assigned here, and so on. Yeah. yeah so that's our textbook. Any, any other questions? We'll be happy to. Yeah. So we had uh, we had one in the chat that uh, Hai Sung did uh, respond to, but do you want to, uh, just to get it on the video too? Um, the question was: You mentioned a fairly high Cronox alpha. Are there other psychometric properties or models that show improvements in student mastery beyond KPA? Tiffany, we're hearing an echo when you were talking. Okay, I think. Um, do you still hear an echo? Oh, not anymore. Okay, it's. I think it's when we have more than one mic on. So, um, okay. So I, I did. I did mute you, Wei. Um, but the question was, um, since, where is it? Would you like to answer this question? Okay, so actually, I responded to her, um, to him, Ian, and also I agree with his uh, suggestion. So we can actually take a look at item, the response theory. But actually, the reason why we use reliability test is that is kind of the simple way to test if the item is um, 
the reliable to test what we want to assess. So, uh, but otherwise, uh, we actually we can actually increase power, um, we can actually the, increase the sample size. Um, but we definitely actually take a look by using uh, your um, the suggestion. I agree with you. But um, but also at the same time, we need to actually increase the sampling power, and also um, uh, by increasing to increase in the sampling power, we also need to do the factor uh, analysis based on how you are going to take out some items to make it more um, increase the sampling power so that uh, we will only select the item uh, which is reliable and then we can actually make a category based on what we want to uh, factor out, what we want to measure based on the category factor. So yes, but I agree with you about that part, but I'm going to take a look more and then thank you for the suggestion. Do we have any other questions? Um, do you all from the team have anything you want to add before we uh, close out? Um, yeah, sure, sure. I have a question. Actually, we all have a question because we have used Google Analytics to uh, track how many students actually use and also users are using um, our online resources. Is there with since now it got published to the Manifold um, the site uh, where you are hosting our published book? Is there any way you can actually add access codes so that we can actually can track how many stu and students or the users are using the textbooks so that we can we actually get the data if you have or do you have any plan to embed some coding to track the data? Uh, as far as I know right now, Manifold does not have uh, an analytics feature, but they're working on one. Um, mm -hmm. So if, if you're uh, tracking your classes, I would continue using your version. Um, and, and then once uh, Manifold gets their analytics feature out, um, we can uh, look at it and see if it's something that would fit your needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be really great because, because right now we need to, um, because we need to, we are using both version, but if, uh, since we are, I keep tracking the usage rate, so um, we want to make uh, we want to know if the uh, this many folks uh, hosting site can offer. But yes, if you actually know in the future, that would be really great if you let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I'll throw a quick question out there. This is Jeff. Uh, so the text that you have, you, you all did one chapter each and you've got a set of learning outcomes for each one. Uh, did you already have like a shared agreed upon set of learning outcomes for the course or did you all have to kind of norm that when you all got together? Uh, uh, for the course, we have a predetermined learning outcome. And then for the each chapter, uh, I think the author determines what is the learning outcome for the chapter to fit into the course outcome. Okay. Yeah, so, so, you, mm -hmm. so the, the chapters that you made kind of meet the learning outcomes that you already have in the course. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. Did you start from? something else or did you uh, write from scratch? Uh, we start, we have a reference textbook, uh, Think Java, uh, and then we really reference up, but we actually writing from scratch. We wrote, we all wrote from scratch. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, so at the beginning we are not, so that's uh, one challenge. At the beginning we were not sure whether we can reference, uh, just directly reference the textbook. But then we thought if we directly reference, it doesn't flow very well, right? So we have to really make our textbook by itself. It's a coherent textbook, it's readable. Even though we include a lot of reference materials, but the textbook has to be coherent, uh, flow well uh, by itself. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. We Otherwise, have, go ahead. Go ahead, Paisa. Uh, who was, uh, go ahead, if someone was talking, I'm sorry, I was talking at the same time. I was just going to add, um, everyone who started the, everyone who was um, OPI on this project had taught this course for a while, so I think we all had a good collection of our own resources as well. So it wasn't, um, I don't think the the writing part was uh, as challenging. Uh, so no, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We have been teaching for a while. We have lots of examples we can use. Now we just transport them to the you know as a web uh, you know uh, as a web format. We actually use a, a tool called. A, Oxidat, right? At, uh, uh, ASCII, ASCII doc. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat here. Um, what, uh, I'm sorry. I'm just um, there we go. Um, just because of the, the echo. Um, so a couple questions in the chat. Um, one of them, did students state any suggestions for improvements? So from your um, surveys, did the students themselves have recommendations uh, to improve the textbook? So yes, what we did was actually we conducted a survey and after each chapter, whenever they have suggestion, they can fill out the form and then we collect the survey. And uh, one of the items um, many students actually mentioned about at the beginning, because this was our first uh, the project uh, from LNG, ALG, and so we actually used many kind of many resources so that they actually mentioned oh, there are so many links. So um, and then because they have to go in that and uh, go to the each link to find out the, some more information. So that was the kind of one suggestion they have. Um, and then uh, and then also the you have another question, right? During the your conference presentation, did you get okay? So that one is very interesting because if we had just regular face-to-face -face conference, we would have more questions. But this time, the two presentations we actually had, one um, what we did and also what Dr. Im did was, it was virtual conference. So basically what we did was, um, the first one was um, the synchronized conference. Um, so not much actually um, that they had, they were very interested in about using our textbook and also they even actually asked us to send the link and their evaluation. But I, um, uh, I'm not sure how they actually um, start to use it or not. But yes, we have a couple of questions they want to use it. But since then, I, I haven't actually get any uh, I did. I, I have not checked down if they are going to use it, but I know the Williams and Mary, one of the faculty from the Williams and Mary, actually, she requested me to um, the share that textbook because she wants to take a look if they can actually adopt. That was the current status, but I haven't heard since then. Okay. Do we have any other uh, questions? Uh, if anyone is interested uh, to use our textbook, you can, uh, you know, welcome to contact Dr. Park. Yes, please contact me so that we are going to share and any information you want. And also, we also added um, the, the tracking, the error tracker feature as well, so that if anyone actually find out the error, we can actually the, um, fix the error right away through the error tracker. So um, more and more feature might be added. And uh, but again, if you are interested in, please contact us. Yeah, and also the OER textbook is very good resources. And also I, I'm the 
uh, in my class, we actually use, uh, try to use many OER textbooks and also for our next project, which is we are doing 2150, which is inter intermediate level, we also use many resources from OER textbook as well. Do you think uh, you will continue to uh, transform other courses that you teach to use OER? Um, yes, I think that Dr. Jean can actually answer about advanced program class. Oh uh, yes, actually, we currently we uh, we have a grant for intermediate programming. Uh, Dr. Haisan Park is also the PI, and for advanced programming, I brought a topic up with a couple of colleagues. I think possibly we're going to do that. We're likely to do it to apply for grant for uh, you know advanced programming. Uh, so then we're going to have a whole set from uh, programming fundamentals, intermediate programming, all the way to advanced programming. I want to add that we also um, have an um, OER textbook for our database class and that project timeline aligned with this project's timeline. So that is also released and being used. Now, when the student found out the you know the textbook is free, uh, they are just so very happy. You know, I noticed that every semester for the past couple of semesters. Yeah. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, more and more actually they're very interested in about using the older textbooks. Because without under these opportunity, probably many people would not know, but this opportunity actually does start to expand the opportunity for everyone to use OER. So thank you so much for um, sharing this opportunity for us to open. Thank you. Um, this was a great presentation. Um, I'm going to reiterate that if anyone has questions um, to go ahead and get in touch with you, Dr. Park. Um, and yeah, this was really great. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. And then this is a really great team, so I'm so glad. And also, especially also, I'm thankful for every our team member and also especially for the ORSP member, especially for um, Dr. Mary, um, the Marie Firestone. She is phenomenal and she is amazing. Um, the, the, faculty, uh, uh, the faculty member at, at GGC. So we really got lots of help from her. Without her, probably it would not be happening. So thank you so much to especially I want I want to say thank you to Dr. Firestone. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Marie Firestone. Very helpful. Part of our job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and also she doesn't have any weekend. Like, like as um, Dr. Price did. So um, then she just call and then just try to solve it and then fix it and the back and forth. Yeah, she is amazing. Great. I am going to go ahead and stop recording. Um, but this was great, guys. <laughs>